Imagine a world where energy is endless, clean and free. Where flipping a light switch doesn't cost a dime. Where cars hum quietly without fuel. And where homes glow forever without a power bill. That dream, so simple yet so revolutionary, drove one man's obsession. His name was Joseph Papp, a Hungarian-born engineer who, in the 1960s, claimed to have built a machine that could power the world without gasoline, oil or combustion. He called it the inert gas engine, and to those who saw it in action, it seemed to break the very laws of physics. Papp's story began in post-war Hungary, a country still recovering from the devastation of World War II and trapped behind the Iron Curtain. Trained in electrical and mechanical engineering, he was a curious mind who refused to accept the limits that textbooks imposed. By the late 1950s, he fled the oppressive political climate and immigrated to North America, eventually settling in Canada before moving to the United States. There, in the garages and workshops of California, he began building the device that would make him both famous and infamous. Papp wasn't like other inventors. He spoke with intensity and confidence, claiming he had discovered something the scientific world had missed, a way to transform the static calm of noble gases into pure kinetic energy. He believed the key to endless power wasn't in burning fuels or harnessing wind and sunlight, but in unlocking hidden potential trapped within the inert gases that make up part of our atmosphere. The principle sounded simple, yet astonishing. Papp's engine contained a sealed mixture of noble gases, helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon inside heavy-duty cylinders. Normally, these gases are unreactive, the quiet spectators of chemistry, incapable of burning or exploding. But Papp insisted that when hit with a precise, high-voltage electrical spark, they transformed into a plasma state, expanding violently and pushing the piston much like a gasoline explosion would. Then, instead of dispersing or combusting, the gases cooled and returned to their original form, ready to be fired again. In theory, it was a closed loop system, a perpetual cycle of spark, expansion, motion, and reset. The gases didn't need to be replaced with each stroke. The only input was electricity to create the spark. In return, the engine produced mechanical power, enough to spin a generator, recharge its own ignition circuit, and still have energy left over to run external loads. In simple terms, Papp claimed he had built a fuelless engine, a power source that needed nothing but sealed noble gas and a jolt of electricity to run forever. Witnesses describe the engine as silent and smooth, producing no smoke or exhaust, no heat, no flame, just clean mechanical motion. Early tests, Papp said, showed incredible performance. His small two-cylinder prototype barely the size of a motorcycle engine, allegedly produced 150 horsepower, more than many full-size car engines of the day. It ran cool to the touch, emitted no fumes, and made only a gentle humming sound. He claimed the engine could run for thousands of hours on a single gas charge, equivalent to several years of normal use. When coupled to a generator, it could power an entire home, lights, refrigerators, and all indefinitely. To the world of the 1960s, with oil crises looming and pollution rising, it sounded like salvation. The news spread fast among inventors and science enthusiasts. Engineers, journalists, and investors traveled to see the strange machine. In his California workshop, Papp demonstrated the glowing cylinders as they pulsed with bluish light. Pistons sliding rhythmically as lights and fans flickered to life. People stood in awe as the engine ran on nothing visible. No wires, no fuel line, no exhaust. For a brief electric moment, it seemed as if the future of energy had arrived. But then everything changed. In 1968, Papp organized a large-scale public demonstration to silence the skeptics once and for all. The test was to take place in Torrance, California, before a mixed crowd of engineers, journalists, investors, and one particularly famous physicist, Richard Feynman, the Nobel laureate known for his keen skepticism and deep understanding of physics. Feynman had already warned that the concept violated basic laws of thermodynamics. To him, energy cannot be created out of nothing, and inert gases cannot suddenly produce power without consuming something. Still, he agreed to watch. 
As the demonstration began, Pap's machine roared softly to life. The pistons moved, lights brightened, and for a few moments, it seemed to prove him right. But suddenly, without warning, the device exploded with a deafening blast. The explosion tore through the building, sending metal fragments in every direction. Windows shattered, smoke filled the air. One of Pap's assistants was killed instantly, others were injured. The machine, and much of the evidence, was obliterated in an instant. The accident made headlines across California. The Los Angeles Times called it a tragedy mixed with mystery. What exactly had exploded? No fuel, no chemicals, no combustion materials were supposed to be inside. Was it a flaw in the design, or was something else at play? In the aftermath, Feynman and others concluded that Pap had either made a mistake or was perpetrating a fraud. Feynman even accused him of staging the demonstration with hidden explosives to fake power output. To him, the whole concept was a scientific impossibility, another perpetual motion hoax, he said. Pap, deeply shaken but defiant, rejected the accusation. He claimed Feynman's interference had caused the explosion. Some witnesses even supported that claim, saying the physicist had tampered with grounding wires during the test. Others believed it was sabotage, that someone didn't want the world to see a functioning free energy device. Whatever the truth, the explosion destroyed not only the prototype, but also Pap's credibility. The scientific community turned on him. Newspapers labelled him delusional. His patents, though genuine and well-drafted, were dismissed as pseudoscience. Investors fled. What could have been his triumph became his downfall. But Pap refused to give up. Over the next decade, he continued refining his designs and filing patents. He claimed to have improved safety systems and refined his noble gas mixture. He approached companies in the automotive and energy industries, trying to sell the concept or license his patents. But every attempt failed. According to some accounts, he even secured interest from Lockheed Martin and other firms curious about the potential military applications. Yet no contracts were signed. Some say executives laughed him out of meetings. Others claim he was quietly silenced, that oil interests or energy corporations saw him as a threat. From that point, Pap's invention became more than a machine. It became a legend, a symbol for those who believe revolutionary technologies are suppressed to protect existing power structures. Theories flourished, that government agencies seized his research, that corporate agents sabotaged his work, that his patents were bought and buried in secret archives. Even the US government briefly took notice. Letters and internal memos show that Pap's engine was discussed among members of the Department of Energy in the late 1970s. A retired Navy admiral reportedly wrote directly to President Jimmy Carter, urging official tests, but no grants were approved and no investigations ever surfaced publicly. By the 1980s, Joseph Papp had faded into obscurity. Those who knew him described a brilliant but tormented man, eccentric, paranoid, and fiercely protective of his invention. He often spoke about being followed, about his workshop being broken into, about his blueprints being stolen. Some dismissed it as a delusion, others believed every word. He lived quietly in Florida, still tinkering with small prototypes until his health declined. On April 13th, 1989, Joseph Papp died at the age of 55. He left behind a handful of patents, a few damaged prototypes, and a mystery that would never be solved. After his death, no one was able to reproduce the engine's effects. His notebooks and technical papers vanished. Some say they were confiscated. Others think his own hand destroyed them. What remained were fragments of a dream and endless speculation. To mainstream science, Pap's engine is a cautionary tale, a story of how wishful thinking and poor understanding of physics can lead to disaster. But to others, it's proof that innovation sometimes dies, not because it fails, but because it succeeds too well. The Pap engine endures as one of the strangest enigmas in modern invention. It sits in the grey space between science and legend, where imagination, ambition, and danger collide. Was Joseph Papp a con artist chasing fame, or a visionary who glimpsed a truth the world wasn't ready for? Perhaps the real tragedy isn't that his engine exploded, but that we'll never truly know what it could have been. 
if there was even a grain of truth in his claims. If noble gases really could produce endless motion through plasma expansion, the world lost more than a man that day. It lost a possible path to free, limitless energy. And so his story lingers, half myth, half mystery, a whisper of what might have been. Every few years, someone rediscovers his patents or claims to have replicated his design. None has succeeded. Yet each attempt keeps the dream alive. Because buried within the tale of Joseph Papp is a timeless question that still haunts us. What if he was right? What if, hidden in that sealed cylinder of noble gas, Papp truly found the spark that could have changed the world forever?